when uh, yes, there is any problem. Be, be available to yes. If I just can check. Yes. So, on day four, uh, in the morning session, I invite all the participants and on behalf of all the participants and the organizing team, I welcome Professor H.S. Dhaliwal, sir. He is currently serving as Vice Chancellor at Eternal Uni University, Baru Sahib, Himachal Pradesh. Sir did his PhD in Genetics from University of California, USA. He was Professor, Founder, Director and Head, Department of Biotechnology, Biotech Center at PAU, Ludhiana. Sir superannuated from PAU and joined as Distinguished Professor at Department of Biotechnology, IIT Roorkee. He was visiting scientist at Applied Biotech Center at Mexico. He is fellow of Rockefeller Foundation Carrier at University of Tokyo, Japan. He is visiting professor at Wiesman Institute of Science at Israel. He is Weisman. Weisman. He is a visiting professor at Kihara Institute he of been. Biological <laughs> Research, Yokohama, Japan. Sir is also visiting scientist at Division of Plant Industry, CSIRO, Canberra, Australia. Visiting professor at Department of Plant Pathology, Kansas Strait University. The list is endless. Uh, so, I will be briefing that. So, sir has uh, supervised many research students and I am one of the lucky students among them. I know sir personally. I know, lucky <laughs> sir is, I okay. know him personally. I have worked with him uh, since many years and uh, sir is very hard working. He is dedicated not only in his research, but he is a dedicated Indian as well. I know sir has, uh, after uh, getting superannuation from uh, Roorkee, sir received many chances to uh, join abroad many universities and uh, research centers, but sir denied there and sir uh, chose to serve at in the Eternal University. He is serving there from uh, since 2011 and one point yeah. which I want to mention here Sir is not taking any salary, not even a single penny from that university. He is serving free of cost. And uh, Sir is, I know he is a great teacher, a researcher. And apart from that, he is a great human being. I am running sh short of words describing him uh, without That's taking enough. much time. <laughs> May I request you, Sir, to take over and uh, you can start the lecture. Over to you, Sir. So the present now screen at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I'm very thankful to Dr. T.J. John and Dr. Anjali Avasti, the faculty of Particular Geology University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, for giving me the wonderful opportunity to share some of the advances in biotechnology for plant improvement. This is very critical for ensuring food, nutrition and health security of the ever increasing global population. So the, and of course this lockdown due to COVID-19 has given us the wonderful opportunity of our change in mindset to really get used to online teaching and evaluation. And in fact, I have one of the this is one of my first lectures which I ever had dare to give it online to using Google Meet and some other uh, social media, etc. So, in fact, uh, I have not been as uh, Dr. Anjali Vasti has given a very nice introduction. Whatever I have been able to achieve, it has been due to my wonderful team of uh, faculty members, very dedicated students. She is of one of them. So all uh, that credit goes to my team, not to me alone. Of course, I have an instrumental in, uh, you know, guiding some research. So recently taking view, my extensive experience in wheat breeding, genetics, wheat evolution, the Indian Council of Agriculture Research has nominated me as the chairperson of research advisory committee of Indian Institute of Wheat and Barley Research Karnal for next three years. It seems that I have to be still active, not really call off that. So, 
Uh, with, with this small introduction, again, I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity and all the participants. And of course, I, I would not expect all of you to uh, properly, uh, you know, totally understand my lecture. So it's a very broad lecture, very broad topic, and I'll just will be introducing some of the aspects of our technology advances and give some of the work done by us, what was done by certain you know, uh, you know, experts in the field around the world. I just have to switch off my... Sorry. So here we know that uh, many of you probably are not aware that before 1960, Sir, may I interrupt you in between? Sir, may I interrupt you in between? Sir, can you now yeah, share okay. your screen? The what? Sir, can you share your screen? Your uh, screen for presentation. Uh, okay, I don't know what to do. Go Sir, ahead. the right side I, bar. I, right side bar. Present now is written. Right side bar. Bottom right side. That, that's not easy. That's not visible to me. Yeah. Is it? Uh, sir, when you will scroll down, you take the mouse. Sir, yeah. what, uh, it's written, uh, you can see the uh, symbol for camera, for mic, for cancelling the call. Similarly, yeah, that, at right, that, present that, now is written. That's not available. Yeah. Oh, okay. So just click so on I the do. screen once. Do I have to do on, the show? on the Google Meet, where you can see uh, the video, on the Meet. Nothing is relevant. That's the problem. Only the only the slides. So you go to the uh, desktop where the Meet icon, where you have opened the Google Meet. It's available. So in the morning. Or uh, you can escape, sir. You first, sir. sir you escape the slides. I think the PPT might. Oh, be I, I think I think that's what I'm sure. Okay. And now. Now, now it's easy. the tab through which you have joined Google Meet. My screen is not available. Where is that Google you can Meet? Sir. Ma'am, you go on Google Meet page at the bottom bar. You will get right side present now. Yes, now perfect. Yeah, yes, sir. Now we can see your screen. Okay, okay. Very sorry for the interruption. No, 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 sir, no, not at all. Yeah, already he probably have seen. So have a look at. My title of the lecture is the advantages of plant biotechnology for global food, nutrition, and health. Spirit. I already have spoken about the necessity of application of recent approaches of biotechnology for ensuring uh, all that, but as well for ever increasing global population. So many of you are not aware before 1960, we had a terrible situation at footprint. We are rather have a situation what to call. Uh, uh, ship to mouth. We were importing 10 to 15 million tons of grain. And with the kind introduction of some of the very smart Indian scientists working at IRI, International Rice Institute, Philippine, Manila, and uh, CIMIT, Center for Wheat and Improvement Center in Mexico, the introduction of dwarf wheat variety, and of course, a lot of other systems from groundwater available, available government, available water electricity, fertilizer, credit, minimum spot price. So green revolution, revolution was ushered by 1970. And of course, uh, first of all, then ultimately we have to really use different types of fertilizer, herbicides, micronutrients. They had to mechanization for timely finishing of field operations. And due to monoculture, a lot of pests, pests and diseases they appear. And of course, during this green revolution, and there was a lot of shifting of area from pulses and algae crops. Some of them we are still deficient. And of course, we are also aware that uh, there is 
is a big challenge, sustainable development goal, 17 of them. And I will not really try to read all of them. And in fact, uh, uh, almost half of them, they could be taken care of fully or partially through whatever, uh, you know, like we are suggesting in this lecture, and uh, like using of biotechnological approaches for uh, ensuring uh, food, health, and uh, nutrition for the Earth population. So, of course, uh, all that, whatever the challenges I have just uh, highlighted in a few slides, uh, part of them they could probably be taken care of by efficient plant improvement. And we know that history of plant improvement goes to up to 10 to 13,000 years ago, when human beings, we were animals, so we were hunting and gathering. So we started settling, we started domestication of uh, wild uh, plants, animals, and others, by even microbes. So it started with that. And then, of course, uh, by the time the genetic principle of uh, uh, the principle of the Mendelian principle of genetics were discovered by the beginning of uh, 20th century, 1903, 1903, then systematic uh, improvement of plants through hybridization and selection. But by the time, whatever insights without any knowledge of genetics, whatever the tremendous improvement they had done in uh, domestication of plants, uh, that's really wonderful. You could see type of maize, uh, I've, I will not really go into much today because time is limited. Then came the mutation leading to chemical, to radiation, then and development of hybrid varieties with heterosis, heterotype breeding, that was the one which led to the green evolution. The introduction of dwarf varieties, which were more irrigation and fertilizer responsive. And of course, we exhausted most of the variability with all these approaches that then we have to have, again, go back to the wise relatives of crop, crop plants and try to get, again, additional variability. That is the area of my specialization. And then, of course, a lot of advantages uh, of plant tissue culture, which I'll just quickly highlighting. Then came by 1970, we understood properly that DNA, the genetic material versus organization, how good it could be understood, how it could be used for improvement of plant systematically. So, a lot of avenues are there that us have still highlighted. So, then came genetic engineering where we could just clone any gene from any organism and try to modify a lab. And then, uh, then uh, you know, introduce it to another organism for its proper expression. And then recently, we at the last decade, it has, genome editing has come. So earlier, earlier, you know, plant breeding was an art and science, largely, uh, uh, I, you could say, by 1970, it was mostly a lot. And then with all these new avenues, it, it's now more a science rather than art. So we'll discuss some of these avenues in this lecture. And during, just for the information of all those who are not plant beating, not aware of the plant beating technique, these are some of the traits which are not the wide relatives of them. Small seed, shattering, hot threshing, interlinear growth, high tilling, photosensitive, dormancy and many anti-visual factors and this is what our ancestors and we have done to domesticate the plant and make cultivated varieties. Probably you could read faster than I could present and this is just a history I think it was a lot of time how the domestication in barley that was done one of the most primitive plant about 20,000 years ago the it was uh, two row barley only. See, this year in the Middle East country, from probably uh, Israel to China. And uh, then it was six row barley, of course, larger seed, non, uh, uh, you know, like lake seed, uh, loss of brittle records, everything, whatever the characters in weeds, they probably were taken care of. And ultimately, six row barley, hygiene, or, you know, gold grain, and others are now we are trying to take care of the uh, resistance, quality, so many other things. But there are a lot of gene and genomic sources. So, this is the situation. In fact, that exercise uh, started with, uh, with the investigation of all crop plants about 10 to 13,000 years ago in eight central regions across several continents. 
And there's the same story for each and every crop. You have to go through a crop of your trust. And then, of course, uh, I'll touch it more on the use of various uh, biological approaches, which are approaches of cell biology, molecule biology, combined together, and that uh, is that transformation. And of course, tremendous data has been built for the proteomics and DNA sequencing and others, so which could not be otherwise manipulated without the use of proper bioinformatics. And now we have again come to very precise and rapid improvement of uh, organism through genome meriting. At the end of a lecture, I'll, I'll, I'll give some uh, slides on uh, genome meriting. And then, uh, of course, coming to cell biology, application of plant tissue culture in both uh, plants and animals, uh, especially in plants, is the focus of my lecture, micropropagation of disease to plants using various uh, approaches. So, macron variation are then ambition variation to uh, activation and selections. And the tissue cultures are various gets abuse, and then we can do it with the selection, haploid production, you know, like uh, even from either female gamete or male gametes, we can. And plant lets at the end of the chromosome number get the homozygous plant immediately, which saves the breeding cycle from almost 30 years to about two and a half years of life. By adaptation, again, uh, getting useful various variability from the wild relatives of crop plant. Cryopreservation, again, uh, meeting the long term storage of young plant and uh, suspension culture of all that certain advantage for biotransformation. Uh, Transformation, uh, various techniques. Uh, I'll just still discuss something about agrobacteria. And uh, just to give a hint of the application of plant tissue culture, for some of the work which we have been doing in our my plant, but for a set of visual data, micropropagation gladiolus. Here is your carblet right in between the flask itself. Various sizes, disease free plant, carbon lab, which could be given as mother plant to industrial uh, industry, uh, nurseries owner. And then sugarcane, that is a challenge from our sugarcane mills. There's a lot of red rot disease, so try to produce disease free platelets and then keep it in isolation and try to supply disease free plant material. And also, this is the story of Scott Musili, Prorophyta, again, one of the medicinal plant we use. So, right now, I had the opportunity of learning my tissue culture from very distinguished uh, tissue culture professor, Prasham Rasigic, who, who had, uh, he was a student of Dr. Skoog and he had developed the MS medium. So, he has been a professor of tissue culture there in the Department of Plants at the University of California. And that's where I learned my tissue culture from him. And of course, this micropropagation uh, of probability technique has been well protocol well for almost all the plants, all the nursery plants, which is the development of genus tree plants of the world. And it's now not a technical work, it's just a work of technicians only. So we have a lot of built in capacity in India and abroad everywhere. So. And also, there's a challenge of uh, getting uh, plants derived uh, from somatic cells. So here we again develop it all with taking like embryos from rice, the mature embryo. Immature embryo, there's no problem, but there's a problem of mature embryo from cereal and from other crop plants. So in rice, we did that work, is we were able to get plant that's from mature embryo. And again, uh, what, uh, from the haploid cells, you know, we did talk about the application of the haploids, their utility. And uh, that was done. Uh, uh, it can be done through anthracosis. So this is the anthracosis of rice culture. Then you can get callus ultimately and uh, plant lads, some are albino. You can, uh, we can double the chromosome number spontaneously, get doubled as well as with the application of calcium. So here we can instantly a double uh, of the homozygous factor. So just to summarize, what has been the progress of plant tissue culture? Protein potential, somatic and gametic cell 
in plants have been demonstrated. Of course, it has been demonstrated in animal also to some extent, but not to keep that. So we still have to have cytoplasm from the embryo and take the embryo direct and uh, egg out and then have nucleus from the diplet cell and then we probably can get uh, uh, in with it. Then the protocol for microbiotic has been, as I said earlier, high yield and better quality of microbiotic plants again. Large microbiotic installed capacity available around the world. So microbiotic has been specifically metrosized for the vegetative populated plants, which cannot be uh, crossed uh, easily. And then crossability values have been overcome and we have been able to make crosses with the wild relatives or distant related species as well. And coming to another aspect, as I did say that there are about uh, half of the world third of the world population suffering for iron deficiency would see the world map. I think except in some states of the US, some part of Australia, almost all the world we have used are deficiency of course superimposed with vitamin A deficiency also with iron deficiency. Situation almost the same, a little less for zinc. And iron, of course, is uh, the fourth most predominant nutrient in the soil. Zinc, of course, is deficient. You can see in some fields uh, of some cereals, if you do not have zinc, you could get uh, totally zero stunted and uh, you supply zinc. You get that very nice plan. So we have a lot of stunting with zinc deficiency. Harvest Plus, one of the food and agriculture organizations offshoot. They took up the responsibility a few years ago to take care of uh, the micronutrient one and vitamin A deficiency. So this is what we have in the current uh, crop plant: cereals, wheat, maize, rice, even legumes and others, cassava, potato. And uh, what we want uh, in the 40 to 60 million. And uh, of course, there are various strategies who could really take care of the micronutrient deficiency. Best approach is uh, the genetic biofortification. And that's what people have taken up. Biofortification uh, is a problem too. So what uh, we have to do through germplasm enhancement and avenues, we can overcome the yield barrier. We have yield collective almost for almost all the crops with other than the hybrid variety. And uh, we have to broaden the genetic base for uh, diseases, insect pests. Tolerance to A biodiversity is one of the major challenge. And uh, of course, now we have enough food. We probably are taking care of more of nutrition and processing quality. We have to do that. We hardly have in India any wheat variety with good uh, bread making quality. Of course, in rice, we have very good basmati variety which we are exporting, but not for all not for maize, not for other. So we still have to have a diversification. We still have to go back. You know, you probably in the barley slide, uh, mankind started with thousands of species and ultimately we are left using only very few species. So here again, diversification is one of the major issues again by juggling farmers and short food and nutrition security. So we have to probably investigate more plants and get used to prevent some cancer. And here, if you look into that, that uh, this is the non-biofortified, this, uh, you know, like uh, flues, uh, for various plants, uh, for iron and for zinc. And uh, this is the harvest plus target, target from, from WHO, for all of us is the target. And that's the type of variability which is existing in the germ plus, which is available to us. So by using certain biotechnology process, Molecule breeding, genetic engineering, etc. So we can uh, get the required level of uh, is a micronutrient. I took up the challenge as part of part of biotechnology uh, uh, initiative to biofortify wheat for grain, iron, and zinc. And we are still doing that work. Started at Rajuriki and took over the project to by shifting to Edinburgh University, which are doing it. And here you could find out what are the commercial wheat and durum varieties have low up to 30 parts per day. And these are the wild related non-progenitive species, which have not shared any of the three genomes with wheat. 
So they have uh, reasonable high thing, but the average is much higher. But, uh, so we took these some of the donor species, and uh, this is how the wild animals look like. You know, they are wild grasses. They mature. They shatter. They have hard thrashing, very low yield. So we made crosses of these with me. This is the story. Uh, for totally sterile, no chromosome pairing, backrash game with wheat, second back, uh, third backrashes. Ultimately, we were able to, and also, of course, monitoring the uh, microbiota. And ultimately, we could come up with what we call substitution line with uh, uh, one or two pair of alien chromosomes. These have been uh, identified through case genome can see to hybridization. Uh, and uh, then, of course, we have such lines, you could see some, these are the donor species, this is the recipient city, these are some of the derivatives of B. And of course, there's a lot of linkage drag, because one chromosome contains thousands of genes, which are from the wild relative. So they, we have to go back for several years. So here, you know, then we did a lot of chromosome engineering. Here you could see. One arm of the LV chromosomes has been taken out, or the one arm has been retained, which are the desired genes for microdutian. And uh, of course, the another, uh, we have used it for seed radiation, pollen radiation, use of the bearing to do this chromosome gene. Very complicated work. All that, what I have presented, ultimately, we have the uh, wheel tractor, which uh, have a privilege yield with the best cultivar, and at the same time, uh, higher micronutrient. Here, yeah, these are the slides. I don't think we have time. Comparable yield of the higher yield, like uh, you could say 25 to 75 percent higher iron, almost uh, 30 to 100 percent more zinc and vitamin. So, we also have identified the genes which is transferred from the wild relatives, which are responsible for uh, material homeostasis, giving uh, higher uptake, transportation. Question. So, in fact, this type of work is in the last two, three slides which I presented is the work of my eight PhD students. Many of them, they are central. Very nicely in the university, RPOs, and US universities. A lot of team work. And of course, similar work has been done by ICRISAT at Hyderabad as well. So, uh, specifically for Panicetum, Bajra. Uh, and you could see that you know there's up to 80 parts million iron and also up to 40 parts million zinc. They have, we have grown these hybrids very successfully. It's not only the biofortification, it's also the bioavailability. That's a big problem. I listed, I think, somewhere in the slides earlier that bioavailability is a problem too. And we have a number of inhibitor. The most prominent is the phytic acid, which ciliates all the micronutrients. And even fast fat is in the alluronin of most of the seed and uh, grain. And we have certain enhancer, and uh, of course, we have simultaneously take care of the breathing of uh, reducing the inhibitors, increasing the enhancers are through processing of the grains and ensure the viability. Other aspect, of course, is to well, the disease system. We have one mega variety of wheat that is well similar. Which was developed for the in 1974. It had gone to Pakistan. That was the variety which really assured the green evolution. It became highly susceptible to rust. And then we crossed this variety with another uh, non presenter which is the love Soviet. And there's a lot of exercises that I had listed earlier. We were able to ultimately, uh, which has 21 chromosome in get a disease resistant variety of WL cellular which has complete chromosome 5M substitute for chromosome 5D as substitution line. But this will continue from this is situation. This is what WL cellular this is the, you see the rust uh, and this is the donor species totally free and then we develop the progression line resistant to uh, both the rust resistant to leaf rust. And of course, again, that was done with the association of Kelsa State University. Some of my students went out there for the PDF. And this complete chromosome was dissected. And ultimately, we retained only a very small portion of alien chromosome. We had two restrictions, LR57 by year 5. 
So this is the type of work we have done for many such genes, for several diseases from the wild relative, which really act as a sort of a gold mine. And it's not only for wheat, it's for almost every crop. And here you see we have some for versifications and a lot of other minor millets, finger millet rich in calcium, we follow it already. We have grown it to over the hybrids, uh, which are rich in soybean, also very good crop for protein. We only use for uh, oil, uh, that's 40% protein. So it's poor protein uh, availability in nutrition nephews. So we have soybean lined with null and soybean decorated at the dog. And buckwheat is one of the, uh, you could say, pseudo cereal. And uh, other are oats, rich in glabule, lentil, rich in omega fatty acid, barley, of course, had higher sulfur fiber, foxtail milk again, and rich in fiber. So these are some of the crops which needs to be invasive. Of course, triple purpose sorghum. Again, we got it from Araba, and uh, it could be used for three purposes it could be used for fodder, it could be used for sweet juice, it could be used for green. So we also have introduced that. And of course, besides that, still there are a lot of medicinal plants around. So we have strategic advantage here located in uh, this mid Himalaya, lower mid Himalaya. Again, there's a lot of medicinal plants around us. So our Department of Botany and Biotechnology, they are cooperating, try to uh, prospect. Uh, so this is the number of six, seven species of Physalis. And uh, just uh, name it, see if I which it doesn't have its uh, phytochemicals. Again, Ashwagandha, many of you must have heard, you must be consuming also part of the zoopomatic medicine. Again, we have that much of trichotypes which have intra-hardiness and have very high amount of ethanolides and others, and we have tested their active acid properties. Again, these are all three local plants, again, very distinguished medicinal properties around. And, I am very sure this should be case for all of us. You know, coming from different states, we have probably the own local medicinal powers which are being used by ethnic practices and uh, uh, your weather. So here we have a symmetrical our project to the Ministry of uh, Panchayati Raj. There we have taken 19 medicinal powers and distributed our us in association with the Grand Panchayat in a way which our university is located. We work together. Of course, there's an advantage of these medicinal plants. They could be grown organically. They do not provide any fertilizer. They do not have any pesticides. They're just weeds, wild relatives. And they could be given in marginal areas. So we are trying to, uh, you know, like take up this plant with sport so that we could enhance the pharmacy to around us. And uh, coming to the other aspects, uh, the molecular biology, here we have all sorts of uh, avenues, we have the fingerprinting, molecule mapping for various traits and others. You probably could read these slides better, quicker than I, and uh, as far as gene cloning, or to make a map, and you know, do to other courses. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, it has a lot of application in uh, uh, sequencing of certain genome, mass-based, short-term, comparative genomic, functional genomics. So one is what's easier to have structural genomics, get you know, to uh, quick DNA sequencing, we could do it, the sequence, but how to lot the functional genomics? Anjali also had work uh, on functional genomics of one of the gene of rice, which I had. Uh, well, through a sensational knockout using uh, agrobacterial mediated transformation as possible. So, there are several other avenues uh, available to do functional genomic and then come up the big change. But we still, this genome was uh, sequences much earlier to start with the eukaryotic genes. We still probably have 6,000 genes. We are still trying to lot very sponsored these genes. So, what to talk about the rice and we then uh, other crops, it will take lots and lots of time to put. And proteomics, of course, also again, is a very important field. Molecular markers, I will not go today to a series of molecular markers which have been used for all the various purposes for, for digitality. But now 
with the cheaper sequencing, uh, faster sequencing, with much longer reads available to us. We are trying to rather using various markers or various pulses. We are trying genotyping the signal. And at the same time, we probably are trying to do genome wide selection rather than uh, using some one traitoring or a few traitors that are able to probably do the breathing at zero time. And here is one of the application of molecular breathing. This has really been taken off almost for every crop, for many uh, like major genes for disease and insect pests around the world. And we also took up a challenge uh, in normal eyes. Uh, we have nearly 40 genes for diseases against caused by Jeptomonas rhizi, bacterial species. So these are the symptoms of susceptible plant, and these are just one, these are inoculated. And uh, our basmatis are highly susceptible to bacterial leaf blight, and uh, these are uh, very uh, potting crops we exported. So we took up the challenge at Aitiruki, and uh, these are the markers linked to the gene of uh, uh, resistance against the blight, XA5, XA13, XA21. So at seedling stage, we can just take um, tip of the leaf, extract the DNA, apply the marker, see it, which plants in the breeding have the gene, which do not have the gene, and we can parameter the gene. And this is one example. See, that was, uh, the, this is the donor, uh, recipient, Dera uh, Basmati, uh, uh, we exported around the, you know, from Uttarakhand, and this is what we took. Uh, Dr. Deepak uh, Raj Proth, who is a faculty member at Udaipur University, he, he had one his PhD problem. So we we uh, we transferred semi dwarf gene of rice of uh, green evolution wall and actually 13 x 20 to this basmati. And this is the version you can see Anjali standing there in the field that I had to do. And uh, here too, we took up the challenge. Uh, there are some local major varieties, local white, local red. Uh, people prefer these varieties. And here we also took one of PEG2 mutant, uh, which has been there and it has been by Dr. Marcel of Hindu Society in the Market Cemetery, took up the challenge and tried to remove what are the undesirable factors associated with PEG3. And he has been well, uh, he has been able to develop quality protein maize. So we took up that again, some work with the help of some embassy students. Uh, we have been able to uh, develop uh, the high protein version of the local right against molecular breeding. And another two genes put together, big two, and uh, uh, phytoin synthase, and other uh, gene with high beta carotene. And here, we are not available for anthocyan. Everyone is after anthocyan, and carotenoid, Flavonoids and others, which are antioxidants. So we have well uh, based versions totally this black. And of course, uh, this is just the data, whatever we have been able to transfer. Uh, a PEG2 or vitamin uh, synthase genes are increasing uh, these very essential amino acids, the tryptophan and glycine and tryptophan to molecular breeding, of course. And again, as I did say that uh, plant breeding was more an art rather than science, but it's one of the classical paper. It came from uh, Carolina, North Carolina University, Patterson Texel. So that was the first step using RFP markers. They were able to uh, at least uh, find the QTL for three tobacco food size, pH and sample salad, and uh, using RFMD markers, map, uh, so the, uh, you know, tomato at 12 chromosome. So wherever there is a, you know, there's not a bizarre this uh, line. Uh, so there are the genes. So especially chromosome six uh, of uh, uh, tomato has gene for all the three pairs. And this is our contribution where the QTL for these traits, what are the contribution of these traits, that was the beginning. And I think since then, probably all these major QTL for our 
economic trades, uh, almost all the crops, thousands and thousands of them, they have been mapped. And of course, also coming back to the wild relatives of crop plants, this is one of the again classical paper book, China, where they took Rupu Piva, it's one of the uh, immediate uh, ancestral flies distributed in India as well. So they took that, crossed it to one of the best China hybrid parents. And ultimately, you could see all these characters, breeders uh, and clinicals, uh, part plant, days to maturity, days to be having clinical length, I think, grain, per panicle, grain, per plant. And so far, in fact, for wild relatives, they have hidden variability. And for all these traits, you could see where the hybrid is and whatever the best. Uh, Trade they could uh, transfer from the wild relatives they were there. So it is technique to properly but the advanced backgrounds QTL in progress from wild relatives. This is being practiced now in many crops. So this is again a very wonderful example where the wild relatives are only as a four or five grams of uh, size of food and some varieties as one kilogram of it. So someone did attempt to find what makes, uh, what are the genes for, the, for such a huge food size. And these are the six QTL or six different problems from each other. So this really has made possible for us to have a designer crops. Again, this is again one of the classical papers, where uh, genes for cytopine and oxidase. This is responsible for giving high mechanical grain and rice. Abataki is one of the rice vegetables, to bar, but also has high grain number. There are other ones, taller, few grain. So again, the mm -hmm. population was developed and uh, typically the gene for high grain number and uh, more plant height on from one. They, you know, at that being being had the clone, but the specific the one for cytokine and oxidase, that gene was cloned. And uh, of course, this is just uh, uh, other evidences through transplantation, etc., that uh, the right gene has been cloned or not. So, here the poor variety with the longer height and the lower clinical number, and with gene transfer then develop uh, isogenic line for height, lower uh, height, more the other one for grain number, more grain that you can put together. So, see, this I really made possible to do uh, for design crop. Any such combinations of QTL can be taken and any type of plant can be done. Right? So, just some example, a very old slide where few QTLs have been uh, cloned already and restored. Some of transcript spectrum, other are regulatory things. So, most of them, they are QTL are like that. So, so with that, uh, Breeding has been uh, revolutionized. Again, coming to the application for sequencing, uh, of course, uh, hardly there is any uh, virus, any bacteria, or any plant, or animal, or any fun fun fungal species left which has not been sequenced now. So, to start with, like uh, rice genome has been sequenced much earlier, and very recent, the wheat genome also has been sequenced. And as you see, it has seven chromosomes, seven basic chromosomes, and of course, three genome, 21 chromosomes. Rice has 12 chromosomes. Here you could see the comparative map of wheat and rice. So you could see a like, chromosome five of wheat is almost like chromosome five and ten of rice. Chromosome three of wheat has most of the uh, you know sequences which are there, chromosome one of rice. Chromosome 4 of wheat, like chromosome 3. So you could just see it. So they could see again that the rice chromosome has certain sequences for the ADS. So uh, microcollinearity has been discussed, but macrocollinearity is there. And that usually has, has helped. I'm not going to detail on this slide, it's a very complicated slide. But the sequence of other serial like sorghum base. Uh, also has been done. So, taking into how the new chromosome evolution has been taken, why like sorghum has 10, maize has 20, rice has 24. And so, 
uh, how this evolution has been taking over the years, what has happened, so that has been possible. And of course, very recently, uh, Brachopodium, uh, again, another grass has been added, which is still much more basic, you know. And of course, we got used to the genetic engineering also, that's another technique. And of course, why during hybridization and selection, of course, we are just reshuffling the genome quite a lot. And with genetic engineering, it enabled us to clone any gene from any organism, modified it with virus proper expression, and it's uh, transferred to other organisms. And we choose just single gene around and uh, do very quick uh, improvement more precise, controllable, predictable, to short time, and solution only to some of the problems. Like we can cut one of the We only have any set providing uh, control of uh, very control one, so we have to have it cut in ourselves. And uh, of course, uh, it has certain biosafety regulation for human and environment protection in person. And uh, of course, we know that agrobacterium, again, I will not go to detail. A lot of that has been understood, but the interaction between uh, 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 tDNA, uh, TI plasma, and RNA plasma, and uh, cell, how they interact, what are the genes which are responsible for the section of tDNA, it's transferred to plant cell, it's integration in the genome and other. So, tDNA have been. Uh, uh, cured, uh, disarmed, and yes, certain vectors, viral vectors have been done. Earlier, of course, it has been natural choice for dicot plants only. But now, I think, with uh, very serious efforts to understand this issue properly, uh, it has also been adopted now to for the transformation of cereal as well, be it by squatly or being uh, transformed with application. Of course, there are other avenues. I will not go into detail. These are the various uh, genes uh, which have been used for the natural operation. There's no end. Hundreds and hundreds of events have been uh, uh, developed around the world. Few of them have been commercialized. Again, golden rice must have heard that South Asia we could give rice with cyanobita carotene. It was Ingo Patricus, uh, my farmer colleague at Free to Group School, Bas in Switzerland. We had worked together. A few years uh, he took up the challenge to develop uh, rice for beta carotene. One of the events with very low levels of beta then another one came with bears and others. have to get that. Golden rice with a very high level of beta carotene in it. And, uh, and they're still being struggled, you know. By, could be released for commercialized. In India, we have the gene has been transferred to other rice cultivar, but instead we have spice in it. And of course, other example of again in rice, even if you do biofortification for grain, iron, a couple of varieties have been released for gene. But the problem is, hello, and the problem is, uh, you know, not lot of. Uh, I think they get precipitated in the value row, the pulsing get removed. So here, again, one of the classical paper where they took three genes, genes for jealous type like, gene for uh, uh, nicotine, nicotine amine uh, synthase, and uh, gene for swab in ferritin. Three genes put together, ultimately it has been able to get uh, even uh, up to four times more iron in polished rice than one point six times more rice. So these are some of the example at the thousands of here you could see some of the uh, you know like cereal beans, vegetables, seed fruits, which have been genetically engineered for agronomic traits and quality and other things you could see uh, this line. But useful hints I have given you could probably read it. So uh, we have been very cautious about genetical modified crops, especially youth still has not been able to uh, feel comfortable with it. In India, we have a lot of our country, but not other South we probably the old story of BT uh, Brinjan has not been released, Bangladesh at least. So a lot of problems are there. So these are some of the hints I have given. I'm not rather to read them. Chart is of time. 
and of course our major efforts would be uh, uh, that in the A virus testing. So we could control diseases best through application of pesticide, but uh, you know, say about therapy, drug, salt, and other things, they cannot be. So we have a lot of genes, a lot of good strategy, how could have multiple genes paraviated through genetic engineering, a lot of problems to make them tolerant to virus testing. And these are some of the genes, mostly from bacteria and the organisms which have been used for developing transient viral virus cells. Even gene for pharmaceutical proteins have been done, done which are of one or the other use. And uh, resistance starts, I think, in one of the workshops, in one of the conferences in Canada, 25% of the uh, posters and presentations are on that because of the problem of uh, diabetes around the world. So, this is the, it's the amyloid, which is about 25 percent. Otherwise, the myelopectin, which is 75 percent, is about the tricep base. So, our efforts are to develop all the system SARS amyloid, which get assessed on the large intersection with the glycemic test. And coming to summary of transgenic plant, here you see, these are the major four crops. Cartels have been based. Two events have beside tolerance and uh, uh, insect resistance. And if we total out the area, and uh, these all four crops, we have about two million hectare area around the world with so many countries of China. And of course, as you see, 95% of the Indian cotton is again BT cotton here. And the other spectrum, of course, again, is more precise gene silence. Again, I will not go into detail. That was not in nematodes which happened. There was an old price given. It's the double standard RNA, which ultimately induces through various pathways, like risk, and try to dissect the corresponding RNA. And to do the gene silence, that has been demonstrated to me, a lot of crop run that has been done to start with. But much better technique for uh, uh, like genome editing rather than using the uh, you know, like RNA silence in genome editing. That has been a technique which uh, is, has bacteria has been for their immunity against viruses. And we have understood for the last, uh, say, mostly decade or so. And uh, when I was some virus attacks in Syria, some portion of that, what we call space, gets incorporated into a material CRISPR uh, Cas9 system, trusted, related, trusted, palindromic uh, repeats, etc. That's itself for CRISPR. Cas9 is a protein. So here, this is the system and this is the method, uh, you know, how corresponding RNA to that sequence ultimately uh, gets with the uh, uh, transcription, uh, tracer, tracer RNA, transcription activated CRISPR RNA, that's to me. So this RNA helps to locate the corresponding, this complex, and ultimately there are the understanding breaks in DNA is gets healed up through non homologous uh, antigenic, as well then homology based uh, uh, healing, etc. So, here at least to treat an addition, here we can do a perfect uh, uh, you know, like substitution. So, you can do a lot of gene editing, and then again, a lot of modifications have come up over since, like you can do a substitution. From uh, uh, CT to uh, CG to AT and uh, AD, AT to GC, this can be done with system. And so you can have stabbed gray, you can single standard, and so that's the technique. And here, as a, one of my students, she has just presented that this is coronavirus, we are suffering from it uh, globally. And of course, there have been publications. 2018, how we could use this CRISPR cache technology. One specific uh, uh, enzyme is cas 13 
not the cash nine, but uh, the earlier. So that can take care of uh, we could design and construct case state. We could probably uh, take care of the battery system for uh, degrading the single standard RNA what they see for corona viruses. So some of you that uh, uh, have only animal technology might look into that application and see it if you could get involved in taking care of corona. So again, some of the applications, of course there are numerous applications of uh, uh, this uh, CRISPR gas line system for modifying plants and animals, etc. So here, for example, in we, of course, in we, we have seen it in basically due to certain glycerin, uh, 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 you could say, peptides uh, in we, which are gluten sensitive. One or two percent of Indian people are suffering from that. And uh, we, uh, of course, uh, the genetic causes of that is given or what happened. Uh, people getting even enough food probably are not able to uh, get any anything taken up by their intestine. So here again, people are interested why not to grab. So the, these are the portion. These are the portion of the alpha, beta, omega, glia, DNA, which have certain components for causing the celiac disease. Here using CRISPR. Cash line, it has been possible to reduce uh, uh, by 80 to 90 percent this year. And ultimately, uh, I will not go into that detail. So it's, it's possible to develop uh, even wheat cultivars without uh, which probably uh, will not be able to cause any more CDPG. And uh, another challenge, I don't know, many of you probably are not aware of it. Much earlier, there is a five chromosome of replication sequence much earlier. And uh, then uh, it was known also for every chromosome, for every chromosome, if you look at that, they have tried to give certain sequences which uh, earlier probably corresponded to mitochondria, alpha protobacteria, the primitive bacteria responsible for evolution of mitochondria. And also, there's the uh, cyanobacterias, but with the term chloroplast. So again, during evolution of eukaryote plant cell, a lot of genes from the primitive alpha protobacteria and cyanobacteria, they move to the nuclear genome. And uh, here, uh, again, while sequencing various chromosomes, they have been able to locate the mitochondrial protein, the, the cyanobacterium chromosome in almost all the chromosome of rapidopsis. How, you know, this, this natural genetic engineering has taken place, which is still going on. So I think with all the nice advances we have with us, probably it will take a lot of time for us with the information at the same speed to be able to understand how the genetic engineering is going on from arginalis to, you know, transfer of their gene to nuclear genome, where they get probably transcribed again these protein for harming certain functions in these arginalis, they move back to perform their function in these arginalis. And I think, uh, in such a system, we need to understand again uh, the types of problems so that we can probably make up the further improvement of uh, an ability of mitochondria and chloroplast to do whatever the function they are doing in educated person. And to summarize the future prospects, we know that now we have enough knowledge, enough practice, all living organisms are constituted one single gene. Right for virus, right for bacteria, fungi, plants, animal, forest trees, and others. So we we have also the good technology available with us to 
cloud the gene, modify it and then deliver it to any other organism for their uh, a desired expression at the exact time in the exact amount. And of course, you now with plenty of, uh, uh, of course, food available around the world, but with some distribution problems still, we have to give now more uh, emphasis on improvement of district quality, which probably already have taken up, as you have seen, due to the fire fatigues for micronutrient, for beta carotene, for so many other nutrition factors now. Tolerance of abiotic stress will be to global warming. Due to more and more abiotic stresses, we now see that the total change in weather parameters and others. So here, again, we have the desired gene, and not through uh, conventional plant feeding, it has to be done with all the recent application of advances in biotechnology. So we could develop now uh, the plants. Uh, not even a single plant still has been commercialized by biotech. Less to biotic stress. And of course, we have to have uh, overcome yield barrier. Here, with the application of CRISPR uh, uh, Cas9, that system, and also parameting of proper uh, QTIs for uh, these qualitative shares and other. Since area is going to, agriculture is going to come down, there is a more and more constraint, which I probably mentioned in my second slide. So, you have to have, uh, uh, you know, higher uh, productivity. We have to overcome. We have to overcome. It. And of course, uh, that prefer uh, genome editing without DNA. So of course, uh, and for genetic engineering, we cannot do it. We have to have gene from outside. But for editing, there is probably not need to take uh, take any alien gene or use any selected marker. So if we were able to do it, people are trying to get into that. If they do it, then probably will not be an issue of for biosafety uh, regulation for, uh, for the human and environment. And I think uh, in America, people are already trying to think about it. So not to really take uh, that uh, edited plants uh, through this setup. And of course, uh, whatever best we do to ensure true nutrition health security of the global population, we must think of sustainability of that species. And uh, of course, uh, all of us must, at the end of this lecture, have some commitment to one of the sustainability, welfare goals, sustainability that we want. So whatever the best we could do in our capacity as a uh, as a student, as a teacher, as a social worker, as a politician. So we probably uh, really commit ourselves as to one or two of the sustainability program. So with that, I would like to thank quite a lot. I took a few more minutes, and this is this one could cause probably some disturbances in our uh, system. That was my one of the first attempt to get used to that's online and Zoom and Excel. So thanks a lot. Thanks everybody for the patient uh, hearing. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such an informative lecture. Uh, well, I had to do uh, you know, very quickly, but I still stuck to time. Sir, uh, can we have uh, some questions? Like uh, the. Yes, sir. Uh, we have few questions. Like the first question okay. is from Dr. Amarpal Singh. Is there any difference between nutritional value of hybrid grain and normal grain? There, there has to be. Uh, you know, like we are trying to biofortify crops for higher energy, higher beta carotene, higher vitamin A. And we have seen it, uh, you know, this. Uh, Biochemical analysis, we have higher amounts of, and uh, uh, especially for biofortified uh, uh, wheat, uh, we already have done some work with the uh, uh, cacao cell line, at cell line level, not at uh, like uh, human level or animal level. So definitely if we are biofortified for energy, we have had a higher availability of this microbiome. 
to have to, to get what we said. Mm. So I think it's a very viable uh, approach uh, to take care of the um, nutritional aspects of food grain. Uh, sir, the next question is from Ms. Chandra Prabha. Do genetically modified foods have side effects on human health? So far, it's a very much consistent uh, 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 you know, I mean, issue. But like, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, genetically modified soybean for herbicide tolerance. We have modified base, uh, genetically modified base for insect and the herbicide tolerance. Of course, we have custom modified it as only fiber, which probably will be really close and uh, we have also, I think, cake from cotton. So far, there has been no side effect of the genetically modified crop uh, plants of human health. There has been one report in the US where they had the BT modified corn and uh, it had very, very high level of cry protein. There some people did report that they had some allergy and uh, it was immediately withdrawn. So with all these our efforts, we should have a system to also get the drive. We have uh, are able to get some problems with our genetic problem. Europe is still very cautious. Europe is not ready to still uh, permit any commercialization of any genetic factor. But, but uh, my impression is like, uh, you know, we'll take salad and it has almost all sorts of bacteria, BT and all other feed up we talk about. We take all these bacteria and uh, nothing happens to us and we just have taken only one or two genes from such organism that try to multiply plant and uh, there, uh, of course, there are a lot of other issues. Right? It's very complicated to talk about it. It's a problem to talk about what the full fledged is actually there. So, Sir, uh, one more question, like what is the difference between GMOs and uh, CRISPR-Cas9 modified organisms, plants? Uh, okay, I think that's a very good question. And, and GMO, uh, like uh, our approach, even if you are using particle bombardment or protoplast-mediated transformation, or we are using uh, agrobacterium, the integration of the alien gene is at risk. And in your case, two, two parameters yes. are the same. Yes. It could either occur in intron, exon, non gene region, it could be in uh, even a promoted sequence. But here in CRISPR Cas9, we know that exactly where we have to do some modification base substitution, deletion, leading to knockdown, or any change uh, in the function of the inserts. Very precise, it's rapid, it's very exact. It is just in, within a gene itself, not in the entire genotype. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, sir some more questions. I think very interesting questions. Yeah. Uh, sir, a few few more questions. Like we can take, I think, two questions more. Like uh, one question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. There's no problem. I'd uh, uh, love to have such questions. Thank you, sir. Sir, the question is from Miss Gauri Thakre. Why chloroplast transformations are safe? Is it? Yeah, that has been taken up. I, still, I think we still have not been able to take uh, you know, transformation of mitochondria. Chloroplast, uh, I would not say it's uh, safe, but uh, whenever we want uh, you know, very high amount of some protein to be expressed, since, you know, we have multiple copies of uh, chloroplast within the plant cell. And here we can, once we transfer a chloroplast, we can enrich the transformed chloroplast ultimately have our chloroplast in a cell. Sometimes it would vary up to 700 or so per cell. So then we can have, rather than having such gene in the nuclear genome, well, we not have multiple copies at all in the chloroplast we can have just uh, you know because of a higher number of chloroplast we can have very high level of uh, expression of such native uh, proteins you know like specifically for pharmaceutical etc gene 
then we need a higher amount of such proteins to be able to extract from plants, etc. We definitely would like to have chloroplast transformation rather than. And it's very precise. There is a very good technique. And it has not been possible to do it in monocot, in dicot, it's very easy. Uh, thank you, sir. So one question we have from from our YouTube uh, link. Uh, in which type of plant CRISPR technology is applied? There's no link. I think uh, if you to go through any article, uh, like uh, in the article which I uh, read, possibly you could still have merely uh, I was under plants in which it already has been done demonstrated beautifully. No problem. So this is the uh, approach and the times to come. I think many people we must learn this technique. Uh, every lab should be expert in the genome editing, and that's the method of choice. And I think it's going to be also free from all these biosafety regulations in the time to come. Everyone is uh, aware of that. So the last question it's from Dr. Javed. Selenium is also a good antioxidant found in cereals. Can we do biofortification of wheat using molecular approach? No, why not? I would rather prefer someone to, you know, genes are known, genes are cloned, or anthocyanin, of course, is a very long path. But ultimately, we could have the final uh, rest of that, they are then in plus. Only we need the last two or three genes for this pathway by China. So I would rather prefer uh, the scientists to do chloroplast uh, transformation okay. using such genes. Okay. We've got plenty of anthocyanin, and the problem is anthocyanin is there only in the allulose layer. That's worth noting. They go massive for the way. So, and we definitely should deliver the way. Some of the genes for uh, natural conditions that they have been delivered to uh, uh, endosperm. So this anthocyanin gene should be delivered with using uh, uh, endosperm specific promoter to the endosperm cell. So there you can afford to have uh, quite a lot of amount of anthocyanin and at the same time they will not be moved through during processing. In rice, if it's at the it's a move to processing, to processing in wheat, we you know we remove the bran etc. It goes out, so there again we lose that. So deliver it if you are competent enough to endosperm expression. It will be a beautiful thing to do, very, you uh, could say, challenging project. Uh, I think most of the queries has been settled for the participants. So on behalf of all the participants and our organizing team, I would like to thank you, sir, for such an informative lecture. It was wonderful to have you among us, although it was virtually, but still. And so we are getting very good response from the participants. We have around 240 participants, 165 are available on uh, through Meet, and 74 participants joined us through the YouTube channel, YouTube link, and all are satisfied uh, with your lecture. And sir, it, I know you are always happy to take challenges and uh, to deliver a lecture <laughs> in this uh, webinar. It was, of course, a big challenge and you happily accepted it. That was the best part. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Uh, okay, okay. Thanks again to you, to your team, and uh, all the participants who probably uh, they were there. You know, uh, of course, I had to quickly go through this lecture and uh, at least introduce some of the biotechnological approaches. You know, one or two examples. And I think each approach is probably but separate courses and uh, hundreds of lectures to justify it. And right. maybe, you know, I know that uh, it's a one of the opportunity online, uh, you know, to do such lectures. So I would love to uh, accept some challenge in the future. Thanks again. Thank you, thank you. So you can disconnect it from your side using that bar in the middle. Uh, okay, welcome back to all the participants. We will be sharing the link. We have, uh, I think, shared the link, yes, uh, for the quiz.
can i uh, request all the participants like please uh, try to join the link through google meet before the lecture when the lecture once we have started the lecture it is not possible for us to get the people entered in this meet platform so uh, today we had uh, many you know uh, people asking to join through meet so it was difficult every time it uh, the message pops it up and it is getting nuisance on youtube so please try to join before the scheduled time of lecture if anyone has any other query they can write on the whatsapp group or over here link kisko share karte hain meet kar ke karta hai meet kar ke